From talking with my students, a view that many of my computing at school friends and colleagues share, there is a growing consensus in the community saying the same thing, that girls need and really enjoy real life meaningful projects, that are cross-curricular and creative curriculum. And by choosing these types of projects, we are not positively discriminating towards girls and away from boys. By trying to focus on being cool in our lessons and creating video games, we're actually alienating many students, both boys and girls, from our subject. I've noticed that both the Rising Stars and Hodder Education publications both have strong cross and creative curricular links, emphasising the STEAM agenda, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. So marketing methodology says that people buy why, not what. Yet traditional ICT curriculums that I've certainly been guilty of planning in the past have mainly focused on what are we going to teach, how are we going to teach it, and then finally considering why are we learn in it, usually to pass an assessment. Engaging all pupils, but particularly girls, can be achieved by listening to what interests them perhaps focusing on real life or cross-curricular challenges, which is the why. Then using computational thinking and the principles behind computational thinking to solve the problem, which is the how, and then what they produce or the statements or learning outcomes that they cover from progression pathways being the what they have learnt. The new computing curriculum does have some focus on technology but there is a greater focus on the concepts and principles that underpin these technologies. So you don't need a telescope to look at the stars in the same way that you don't need a computer to study computing. And there are some awesome CS Unplugged activities available freely on the internet to download. This will also help to adjust your pupils' expectations and perceptions of your computing lessons and encourage them to think about computers being a tool rather than the focus of the learning. Pupils in your school will come from a range of backgrounds with access to digital technologies influenced by their social and economic factors at home. But computing can be used as a vehicle for social mobility with those who excel in the subject being in demand across large parts of the economy. When selecting resources and technologies to deliver computing, care must be taken to ensure that all pupils have access to these technologies beyond the classroom, enabling them to become independent learners and potentially tomorrow's designers and creators of new technologies. Ways to provide access to these technologies could be through after-school clubs, could be making um, software and computers available in the library. You could also look at licensing agreements for software you've already purchased, but also considering open source software, which you could provide students with a download link to, to use at home. Most computer rooms and school computer labs will already have much of the hardware and software you need to deliver the new computing curriculum. To examine and understand how the computer hardware works, why not check out your IT technicians to see what your school or your IT department has spare that you could take apart and look at. To teach circuits and logic gates, for example, I would definitely recommend that you speak to your science department or D&T department to see if they can lend you some of the equipment that they use to keep, teach the Key Stage 3 uh, National Curriculum Programme of Study and the Key Stage 4 uh, specifications for their subject. From experience, if you need any kit, it might be something like a visualiser that you could use in the classroom to display the children's work, for example, like an algorithm they've drawn or you know, in the form of a flowchart or some pseudocode through the interactive whiteboard. Small computers, such as the Raspberry Pi, can provide an excellent teaching tool. There isn't much that you can't do on a standard desktop computer that has a much faster processor you should carefully consider the extra costs involved in connecting a Raspberry Pi to the monitor, to the keyboard, to the mouse, the power supply, etc, etc. However, it does have some fantastic advantages. 
in that children can actually see the hardware components on the board and then they're able to directly plug in uh, input and outputs onto, onto the Raspberry Pi. So networking theory can be taught in a really fun and exciting way by collecting together some old routers and switches and cables and then connecting them together with old desktop PCs, old laptops, maybe even a Raspberry Pi and in a sense rolling your sleeves up and getting down and dirty with hardware and networks. These devices may include digital cameras, video and sound recorders, online servers and potentially children bringing their own devices into the classroom such as tablet PCs, mobile telephones, Raspberry Pis. But we must be sensitive to the children's social and economic resources available to them from home.